said that Sia likes to call this his bread and butter. He's got a lot of different names, multiple personalities, but he is a first round leader beast. Patrick's really, really good too. And Steve Scott almost cashed a couple so far this year. They're all three really, really good. But counselor, I'm going to come to you first. Where are we going? Yeah, I only have three here in this particular section, but I'll mention in the long shot section, you're going to see a few more. I'm going to start with Sam Burns. I think Sam Burns, and I know somebody in the chat was asking about him uh, for their one and done. I think he's a really interesting case just in this tournament in general. As far as the first round leader is concerned, listen, we know Sam Burns can get hot, specifically with the putter. My hope is Sam Burns clubs down, which I think a lot of these heavy hitters are going to do, keep themselves in the fairway. And if he gets hot on approach and with the putter, by the way, this is a morning tea time for him. Uh, I think he he could absolutely dial in a first round leader at 40 to one. Steven Yeager at 55 to one, another morning tea time. I'm mentioning the tea times because I do have a couple afternoon guys, Smalley being one of them. But Steven Yeager at 55 to one. Listen, if you look at this guy's metrics, it is he's he's blowing everything off the page in terms of off the tee approach with the putter. Like this is a guy that I think is ready to win. And, and I don't know if it's going to be this week, but I think from a first round leader standpoint, we've actually seen him spike there. So I like that. And then Alex Smalley, afternoon tea time. I'm just on Alex Smalley. I mean, Steve Scott just told, told us he's a member at this club. But other than that, I mean, we have the, the history there. But other than that, the metrics look so good. The putter can spike. Maybe he doesn't win the tournament, but a first-round leader is definitely in play, even in the afternoon, because I don't expect the wins to be super high in the afternoon. That's why I have a couple of guys you'll see, especially in the long shot section, um, that also have an afternoon tee time. All we have to do is go back two days, two, to see a guy like Steven Yeager, a guy like Alex Smalley raise the trophy. His name is Lee Hodges. These guys are right in that sweet spot. By the way, Joe says, see his late 90s, early 2000s pop culture is unmatched. I agree. I agree. All right. Now, Steve Scott, you're kind of new to the whole golf betting thing, but you have Mm -hmm. taken it to it like a fish Mm -hmm. to water. And it warmed my heart. And I can't even remember the tournament. But when your guy Mm -hmm. was tied at the top at the end of the front, you're like, Coach, I think I've got a winner. And then we just (laughs) Got hose at the end, but I love the enthusiasm. Where are we going this week, sir? Yeah, look, I got three of them. Siwoo Kim, let's start with him at plus 4,000. He's had three top fives here in the last five years, and he's 15th in first round scoring on the PGA Tour this year. He's my only guy out of these three that tee off in the afternoon, however. He's 1249, but Siwoo, I I think, is a a pretty solid pick right here. And the other two are in the morning. Adam Scott tees off at 745. He was tied for second here two years ago, and he has a lot to play for this week at 81st in the FedEx Cup, and he's fifth in strokes in a first-round scoring average on tour this year. So he gets out of the blocks really fast. Now, the last one is kind of a local product from here who's bursted onto the scene, uh, Akshay Batia, uh, 723 tee off, plus 7,000. I think you gotta you got to put a little bit on him, too. He's really solid in strokes gain approach. And most importantly, we talked about these Bermuda greens, these grainy greens they have here at Sedgefield. All of his best tournaments this year, a base other than his win at the Barracuda, happened on these grainy Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Bermuda, uh, even on the Corn Ferry Tour in the Bahamas. Uh, and he grew up nearby in Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is right near Raleigh. So very comfortable in these surroundings is Batia. I'm begging him to eat a burger, though. Put on some weight. Put on some <laughs> he, meat. He has to. He has to run around in the shower to get wet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. That's hilarious. That's uh, Zach says Garrick Higo equals riding Dangerfield. No respect, Zach. You know what I call Garrick Higo? I call him Mister Three Under because he figures out a way every single round to shoot three under. He's a very, very good player, but he's not cracking top tens and top fifteens. Not right now. But I like him. Smooth lefty. Now, Patrick McDonald, I'm coming to you, big boy. Tell me why you like Henley, Kim, and Ryan. Going back to another smooth lefty. That's myself there, Coach, if you needed a hint. Uh, And I'm going a couple horses for courses. Russell Henley, three straight top ten finishes here. Probably should have won the tournament in 2021 when it was the six-man playoff. Really just gagged down the stretch. He entered the final day with the 54-hole lead. Missed, I, I want to say like two or three putts inside two feet. It was really ugly with the putter, but this is a new Russell Henley. He has since come and won at Mayakoba, another short positional golf course. And we've seen what he can do with the irons. When they're hot, they are red hot. Sibu Kim is the same boat, like Steve said. Great history here, a winner here in 2016. And the guy this year for first round leaders has kind of been Aaron Rye. 
Uh, he, he was first round leader there at Harbor Town, another short positional golf course. I've been I rode him, you know, last week at the 3 a.m. Open, top 20 finish. It was all right. But I, I think similar to J.J. Spahn, he's very close to another contention run. We saw him there at the Canadian Open almost uh, in that playoff. So Rye at 60 to one to round it out. 